And tonight, Hannity is coming to you live from the Wynn Las Vegas Casino and Resort right here on the Vegas Strip. Thanks for being with us. My guest at this time is the man who is now has the endorsement of Donald Trump, who you just heard from. And we continue with presidential candidate, former governor of Massachusetts, Mitt Romney. Governor, thanks for, for being back with us. All right. We got to talk foreign policy. I know everyone's been so focused on the economy, and it should, we should put our main focus there because so many people are suffering. But while this is happening, the Iranians are plotting assassinations on American soil. They're threatening to shut off the oil supply to the world in the Straits of Hormuz. They are saber rattling. They are aligning with Venezuela and Cuba and also pursuing nuclear weapons. Now, President Obama once said, said Iran's a tiny country. They're not the Soviet Union. They're not a threat. Turns out they're a pretty big threat. Weakness always begets adventurism by the world's worst actors. And that's what's happening in Iran. The president has, uh, has communicated weakness. His policy tends to be appeasement and accommodation. He was going to meet with Ahmadinejad in his first year in office. Even Ahmadinejad didn't want to do that. We have to show strength. We have to show strength with regards to Iran. I would have an aircraft carrier task force in the Mediterranean, another task Wait force. They threatened to blow it out of the water yeah, in the well, Straits of Hormuz. Well, and then I'd also have a task force uh, in, the, in the Gulf. We have to make sure that people understand we're a nation of strength. We're not going to get pushed around by Iran or anyone else. We don't want to go to war with anyone, but we want to be so strong and have a military so capable and a president so committed to American strength that no one would ever test our resolve. I, I agree. There's something to add to this. They've been fighting proxy wars, funding Hezbollah, other terrorist groups. They've been killing American troops in Iraq and Afghanistan. That's Iran. Absolutely. Now we have the rise or, of Islamization in the Middle East. You know, the president told us the Arab Spring was going to be a democracy movement. We saw radical Islamists have now come to power there. We look at North Africa, the Middle East, this rising Islamic extremism. If they align with Iran, Iran gets a nuclear weapon. What does that mean for the world? It's unacceptable. Obviously, Iran with a nuclear weapon, given the fact that they support not just the Taliban, but also Hamas and Hezbollah and, and movements of terror across the globe, including people in this country, it's Latin America as well. Th this is unacceptable for fissile material to fall in the hands of the Iranians. We recognize that at some point that could be used against us or against our friends in the world. We must make it very clear through every means possible that we will not allow Iran to how have a we, nuclear weapon. How do we stop them? I mean, w short of military action. I don't think anything will work. Well, I think the only you, thing they you, understand is, yeah. is military you may, action. You may be right. You may be right. You want to yeah. take every action, however. We haven't taken that. We don't have crippling sanctions in place. We have not treated them like the pariah they are around the world. We have not arrested Ahmadinejad on charges of genocide the, under the Genocide Convention. The, the, these are actions we could take. And in addition, you have to put together military options and make it very clear to the Iranians that we will take military action if those other actions are not sufficient to keep them from becoming a nuclear nation. We, we simply cannot imagine a world where Iran, the world's really the single uh, largest and in some respects the, the major supporter of terror in the world, them having a nuclear weapon and having fissile material to give to various terrorists is something we simply cannot abide. It means military action has got to be taken. Well, of course. You, 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 have, you have to let them know that, that we are ready to take any action necessary to prevent the, the unthinkable. The president predicted that the Arab Spring would, was a democracy movement. That's what he told the American people. Now we see the elections have taken place. The Muslim Brotherhood is now in power. Radical Islamists, they very likely, they said at the, at the beginning of this, I never understood this, prepare for war with Israel. Real concern of mine. Now the administration is talking about speeding up funding and aid to the Muslim Brotherhood and the Islamists in power in Egypt. There's do, they, do they deserve to get a dime? Well, there, there's almost not a region in the world where the president has been successful. You look around the world, and we have retreated and retreated. And, and the, the Arab Spring, which had the potential of being one of the most beneficent developments of the modern times in, in the Arab world, or one of the worst, is becoming one of the worst. And, and, and that falls on the back of this president, who has failed to, in any significant way, guide the movement of Egypt, which, by the way, is the, is the big player in this regard. 80 million population, the center of the Arab world. We should have been all over Egypt, working with our, our closest associations in the military to help move them towards a process of true democracy and freedom, as opposed to what we're seeing now, which appears to be a movement towards would Islamism. Been, would we have been better off keeping Mubarak? He kept the peace with Israel for 30 years. Well, we, we didn't have that choice. Uh, that, that was not going to happen. So given the, the developments, 
what was essential is for America to play uh, whatever role we possibly could, along with our friends throughout Europe and, and allies around the world, to try and move Egypt towards a position of modernity. And, and, and freedom, but that has not happened under this president. And just look around the world. Look, our relationship with Pakistan has deteriorated. Mm -hmm. uh, the president's decisions with regards to Afghanistan, just in the last a day or two, put our mission there very much in jeopardy. Let me ask uh, his you about his that. failure with in Iraq. I mean, you, the list goes on and on. Five, it's just amazing. Five Taliban leaders currently residing in Gitmo are scheduled to be released from the Obama administration as conditional steps designed to further peace talks with the Afghan. Afghan Taliban. Unthinkable. Yeah, unimaginable. Absolutely extraordinary. Uh, 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 one more po point of evidence that this president is far over his head. Naive, uh, incapable of dealing with, with the affairs of the world. The idea that we would release to the Taliban as they are killing American soldiers and our friends in the Afghan security forces, they're killing them. They're at war. They are our enemy. But as a sign of good faith, we're going to release terrorists to them? It's, it's simply unimaginable. It's the, it's the foreign policy of pretty please. You know, I can be really nice to you. Won't you pretty please be nice to me? That's not how the world's worst actors behave. People respond to strength and resolve. Our great presidents in the past have shown that. This president has not. We must take a new direction in foreign policy, a dramatic direction that says America will be strong. We will stand with our friends. There will not be an inch of dis distance between us and our allies. We will have a military that is second to none in the world. And we will do our very best to guide the affairs of the world towards freedom, towards human rights. Uh, this, this is the heart of what America's foreign policy has been since Harry Truman. And for the first time in 50, 60 years, we're seeing a president try a different course. And it is not working. We have to fundamentally change Washington's direction in foreign policy. Governor, thank you so much for being with us. We really appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks for your time. Thank and you. coming up next, two men who will